Cuando estén listos. Good morning to everyone. You are welcome to this session about solid state materials, electron devices, and integrated circuits. The first talk will be given by Andrei Sarani Santiago Rosales with the work title Digital Illumination System for Combined Cycle Plants Based on Machine Learning. If you have 15 minutes for your presentation. Good morning to all of the persons. My name is Alex Santiago, and today I will go present the work entitled Digital Evaluation System for Combined Upcycle Plants uh, based on machine learning. No. Uh, this presentation will be divided in three parts uh, the block one. Theoretical aspects, the block two, neural network and results, and the block three with the conclusions. Next. Um, to begin with, it, it's important to have a general idea of this work. This work tries to create an emulator capable of simulating an expected result. For this work, it's important to, it's necessary to model the combined cycle plant using artificial intelligence. These um, are able to predict the electrical power of the system it is capable of producing. So um, this based on four inputs parameters, which are the relative humidity, the atmospheric pressure, the ambient pressure, and the vacuum. These two implement in a uh, hardware level in the FPGA, so the emulator will be able to make predictions for different locations. Next. The objective of this work is to develop at the hardware level an emulator of a combined cycle plant in digital technology. This using artificial intelligence based on artificial neural networks. And this is the methodology proposed for this work. First, we got the database and this data is processed. Then the creation and the Training of the neural network is done in the MATLAB environment, and we have the weight and the bias. This for the implementation in the FPGA debates in the VIVAT environment. And finally, we can compare the results of the neural network with the, with the database, and we can see the precision with which it works. Some generalities of the database are this data is downloaded from the UCI machine learning repository and it contains 9,568 9, data points for four features. These features are the ambient temperature, the relative humidity, the ambient pressure, and the vacuum. And this is how the database looks like. We have the four features mentioned uh, plus the electrical power. And now we continue with the second block with the neural networks and the results. This is the architecture proposed for the artificial neural network. And here we have the four inputs mentioned plus the First chiral layer of neurons. This chiral layer has five neurons with an output layer with one neuron. 
finally, we have the result. And this is once deployed in MATLAB. And here we have the same for inputs, the hidal layer with five neurons, the output layer with only one neuron, and as output, the electrical power normalized. And the training for this environment is Levenberg Market. And this is one graphic that the trend of the mean square error value. This is the value of these three subsets, the training, validation, and test. And the best result is at the epoch 140. And this is how we compare the results. We have like, in the red line the target, and the blue line is the output of the neural network. And this graphic has a mean square error of 2.9 millis. And now we implement this in simulin to adjust the processing to 18 bytes. And this is how it looks. And next we can explain uh, all the subsets. And the first element is the normalization of the input data. This, these operations make the result, make the input in a range to zero to one. And the next block is the composition of a neuron. Here we have the weight the weights uh, obtained and the bias, and this is processed with the normalized inputs. Then this pays to the sigmoidal tangent with the activation function. And here we have the output neuron. This is similar to the previous one, but uh, this has a uh, activation function like a linear function is the only difference and the output normalization is a the block which when which is the result and the result is normalized in the range to minus one to one and this is the graph of the result here we have like a target, the red line, and like a output, the neural network, the blue line. In this graph, we have a mean square error to 2.8 minutes. And this block diagram described the, the way the information was, was in the FPGA. Here we have an input block, a layer of neurons, an output layer of neurons, and an output block, which gives us the result. And this is the graph of the, of the result. Uh, here we have a mean square error lower than the others, but this is because the sample is it's less, it's only 100 samples, and the error is of 1.6 minutes. This is a device when, where, the, where the work is implemented in the PDA, and this is the some characteristic of this device. Uh, these are the percent the percentage of utilization of these the device. And finally, the conclusions. And for this work, uh, the main objective uh, was the creation of a simulated of a of an emulator of a combined cycle plant and could mimic the electrical power. This objective was achieved, resulting in an emulator capable 
of this and with a correct and functional way. It was also proved the artificial neural network are a great tool to solve problems when obtaining a mathematical model is complicated. And uh, this project proved that and a new and offer a new alternative for making a, a power plant and specifically a combined cycle plant. And the implementation of a neural network in a digital device, as it was proved, as it was proved, <laughs> can provide information about the behavior of the power plant if the appropriate parameters are specific. So the sizing of this is not relevant, and uh, the generating of a great benefit in the cost of uh, of studies of this type. Since the acquisition of a digital monitor is cheaper than the construction of a combined cycle. And this is all for this presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we appreciate your presentation. And now we, we ask the people in this side uh, to them if there are some questions or comments for this uh, work. Nobody? Yeah. Well, we ask for the questions from people in mind. <laughs> I have a question to me. Uh, how, how did you uh, determine the number of wheels in the deadline for this project? Uh, we made a lot of a lot of training in the MATLAB environment and we choose the best. So the best is with five neurons and for that. And how long did it uh, take uh, this um, uh, test? This test takes a lot of over three days because uh, with um, with five neurons, we made 20 rates and then uh, in with in the same with uh, other number of neurons in the iron lane. So you think it is the way for training the agenda number for many uh, problems? Maybe it's a solution, but Maybe I invest. Well, we appreciate your presentation.
title leading further classification for metabolistic adjust for the extreme learning machine learning. We have 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am going to start. Uh, um, I, I am going to show you my presentation. Uh, this work was presented by um, Arellano Cardenas, Flores Nava, Gomez Castañeda, and me, Sergio Solano. And this work is titled uh, Bigger Failure Classification with Metabolistics at the Odds of Extreme Learning Machine Model. And we belong to the uh, Electrical Engineer Department uh, here in Simistar. But uh, we are going to uh, talk about this, uh, these five points. The first one is motivation. The second is objectives. The third is proposed methodology. The fourth is comparative analysis. And finally, uh, fifth, conclusions. Uh, well, motivation. Uh, there is a lot of models that uh, try, try to uh, predict uh, failures in mechanical uh, devices. Um, and this uh, this work is the is an improvement of the a previous present at CC 2023. Uh, um, at that work, uh, even though it was not capable to perform multi-class predictions, um, and the present is an optimized version of the previous one, and we uh, we have so successful outcomes. Uh, uh, as you can see, the picture in the left, in the feature in the left side, we have the the first model. Uh, in this model, we use uh, a, a deep architecture. Uh, first, we have an encoder, uh, and in the left, we have an extreme machine. Uh, this is a, the first stage is a, a dimensional reduction uh, stage, and the second one is a classificator. Uh, However, in the left side, uh, in this work preset, we have an extreme machine that is just a classificator. Uh, as you can see, it, it, uh, this model can perform uh, at least three times faster prediction than the previous one. Uh, object, objectives. Um, uh, Demonstrate that uh, an extreme machine can uh, solve multi-class problems uh, by manipulation uh, in the first stage of the architecture. Uh, second, uh, reduce the, the computational complexity of the model uh, and demonstrate that the use of multi-channel uh, information can uh, improve the performance in an architecture. Uh, well, uh, in this work, we use metaheuristics algorithm. Uh, this metaheuristics algorithm is a great wolf optimizer. Uh, this is not a great invasive algorithm. Uh, instead, this is a, a stochastic algorithm. And uh, among the metaheuristics taxonomy, we are in this side in the in swarm intelligence uh, algorithms. Uh, proposed methodology. Uh, this methodology uh, is, is very, uh, is inspired in some the uh, in some works. Uh, and well, uh, we are going to classify uh, among uh, three classes uh, and and a healthy class, uh, the normal class. Uh, first, we have uh, an intentionally introduced failures in in appearing uh, in in different uh, in different areas. Uh, first in the outer race, uh, secondly in the board, and in the inner race. This data set was taken from the uh, university uh, in the US. Uh, and well, as you can see, we uh, manipulate by operational uh, information. Okay. Uh, in a traditional uh, assembled machine, we have uh, in the left side, as you can see, uh, the first uh, matrix is uh, is randomly uh, generated, and the second is uh, is computed using using uh, a numerical uh, process. But and the proposed is in the right side, 
This is not a uh, randomly generated, but it's optimized by a green gray wolf algorithm optimizer. Sorry, uh, and the second stage uh, remains uh, unchanged. Is the same than the previous one. And there is the pseudo code of training algorithm on um, extreme learning machine. As you can see, extreme learning machine is a people who are network and is a supervised architect. Uh, there is a pseudo code of great wolf algorithm. Uh, uh, this is uh, an explanation. However, uh, this is just an uh, a mathematical interpretation of uh, hunting behavior in in wolf packs. And well, these are the expressions, and there is a, an explanation, a graphical explanation of this of this algorithm. Uh, as you can see, we have a hierarchy. We have three leaders: uh, alpha, beta, and delta. And we have uh, low-ranking uh, members of the pack, named. Uh, I mean, uh, these three leaders uh, are going to figure out where the prey, the prey is and where the prey is moving to. And, and also, they have to uh, enclose the prey in a specific area and finally take the prey. Uh, well, uh, here, we, here we have a composition uh, of the Extreme learning machine uh, paradigm and the great wolf algorithm. And first, uh, we in the first stage we start and we generate uh, the wolf population. Each candidate can uh, should be uh, uh, each candidate must be a vector and a matrix. Uh, uh, is a candidate for the weight matrix uh, at the input of the architecture. Uh, second. We have to perform a, to train the extreme learning machine for each candidate. Uh, in the second stage, we have a update a leader position. We are going to choose a, among the population which which are the best uh, candidates. Uh, and we uh, later we have a criterion, a sub criterion that could be performance or a, a number of iterations. And finally, we have an uh, an update stage where uh, the the candidates have to be uh, modified, and this criterion <laughs> is, uh, doesn't stop uh, unless uh, the the sub criterion is uh, is met. And comparative analysis. Uh, well, uh, here we have uh, three tables and uh, comparative analysis. Uh, it's worth to say that that the Architecture hyperparameters are uh, 100 neurons in the hidden size. Uh, sorry, 100 neurons in uh, in the input, 300 neurons in the hidden size, and four places. Uh, and as you can see, we have a comparison. Uh, in above, we have a metaheuristic performance, and below, we have a classic performance. As you can see, we have an improvement uh, at least of uh, 10% in each, each one of the cases. Uh, and here we uh, separate each, uh, each table by the uh, severity of the, of the failure induced. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, 0.007 inches, uh, as this, uh, this is a, a low severity uh, failure. And Second, in the left side, we have 0 0.014 inches. Uh, this, is a medium, uh, this is a medium failure uh, severity. And uh, finally, uh, in the corner, in the right corner uh, above, we have uh, 0 0.21 inches. Um, and as you can see, we have an improvement in each one of the tables. Uh, well, in in the original data set, uh, there is two two channels of measure, and one channel is at the uh, in the in the right end, in the left side of the model, uh, 
in the right side, sorry. And the other one is the in the fan. If we stack this information in a single vector, training vector, we uh, can improve the performance in the classification. Uh, however, we have to increase the, the dimension in the hidden size, uh, but it, 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 it is worth to do that. And, and well, as you can see, we have near to 100% in each one of the cases. Uh, and well, uh, this is a comparison and we have to increase the size of the model. And finally, we have a, a, a classification a comparison with two a confusion metrics. In the left side, we have binary classification, and in the right side, we have a four classes classification. Uh, so uh, how can we compare? Uh, well, we uh, a group three, three files, uh, three files, uh, failures, sorry, uh, in one class, uh, in one class, and well, if we do that, uh, we have uh, a performance uh, classification uh, accuracy in the in the first one we have eighty four percent of accuracy, and the second one we have ninety two percent ninety two percent of accuracy. As you can see, this is a great improvement. And conclusions. Uh, well, uh, in this work, uh, we demonstrate that uh, metaheuristic strategies uh, enhance machine learning models' capab capabilities given its inner properties. Uh, a civilian machine can achieve performance comparable to that of deeper networks in some cases. And great, great work algorithm optimizer. Uh, Performance in single layers in com is competitive with graded based algorithms uh, as uh, RM is prop or Adam over machine learning framework. Uh, and Great Wolf uh, optimizer uh, consume reasonable amounts of hardware sources and low computational cost. And uh, a streamlined machine is still feasible to face multi class problems, avoiding single layer typical problems as a refit. Uh, and with the, that's all, uh, there is some references. Uh, and it's good. Thank you very much for your presentation. I ask uh, if uh, you want. People from outside online. I have a question. How how did you uh, determine the number of hidden joints in your experiment instead of maybe a train uh, for some pieces? Mm -hmm. We experimentally uh, achieved the size. Uh, we made a comparison between size and accuracy. We had the optimized version. Is if this this size report? Okay. Thanks very much. So we conclude with this talk. I will share what we talk. Thanks. So the next talk. Um, is the person uh, um, mm -hmm. Question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's online. Online. Daniel, Apolina. Daniel. Hello. 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 I'm here. Okay. Okay. You're welcome, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Are you ready for your presentation? I'm ready, yes. May I 
share my presentation my presentation yeah a little bit earlier of the of that uh, the schedule one so do you want to start right now or no wait for five, uh, five minutes yeah i don't have any problem if you want i start early okay but um, i don't yeah. allow to share my presentation Um, maybe the administrator. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. You are in control of presenting the slides. Yeah. Okay. Can you see my my presentation? Yes, we can. We can. May I start? Sorry. Uh, if you change your presentation in presentation mode, please. Uh, that's okay. Okay, let's start with the presentation of oh, the next talk. Uh, we start with his novel synthesis of thin films uh, on oxide for sunlight driven catalysis, who is given by Daniela Polinar Mal Carabel. So go ahead. Thank you so much. First, I'm sorry because even we are very close. I'm from Querétaro, but this time I'm not able possible to be here in, in person. But I hope the next year uh, may I to be attending in person. My name is Daniela Polinar Amaro Carabeo. The name of the, au the authors uh, Arturo Velasco Hernández, Claudia Elena Perez Garcia, Jose Santos Cruz, Francisco Javier de Amul Flores, and Sandra Andrea Mayen Hernandez. My, my work is titled Novel Synthesis of Bismuth Molybdate, Team Fields for Sunlight Driven Photocatalysis. And this research focuses on the development of the new team field materials with potential applications to solar driven photocatalysis. So, first, what is the photocatalysis? This is a process with significant potential to its wide range of applications, and it's primarily based on semiconductor materials. I show in this in this figure, the figure number one, the semiconductor when it's irradiating with sufficient energy that allows an electron uh, transition to the valence band to the conduction band, and creates the well-known electron hole pair. When this pair is produced, several reactions um, occur in, in both bands, largely driven by the generation of highly reactive space, species, such as peroxy uh, radicals and hydroxyl radicals. This reaction effectively degrades polluants, and beyond uh, the environmental applications, photocatalysis has also been explored in other uses like antibacterial applications, antifoid coat, coatings, self-cleaning materials, and energy-related energy technologies. The material of interest is the bismuth molybdate. This material belongs to a general family with this formula, like other uh, semiconductors, such as bismuth tungsten and bismuth vanadat. Uh, these materials have been studied detailed by the scientific community to the promising photocatalytic properties. One key characteristic of bismuth molybdate is its band gap, with this 2.59 electron volts. And this is particularly important because it allows the material to be activated by sunlight, unlike other common photocatalysis, such as titanium dioxide or zinc dioxide with high have wider band gaps and require additional radiation source sources. This leads to higher energy costs. Some of the key, key features related to the bismuth molybdate is he sees high chemical stability and his high corrosion resistance. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. On the other hand, uh, it crystallized in aerobilious type structure and enhancing its 
his performance in various catalytic processes. The synthesis, uh, uh, remember other synthesis uh, using various complex methods like uh, solid directions, co-precipitation, co and hydrothermal techniques. However, these methods uh, uh, focus on the production of, of the material in powders, and the team field applications is still slightly unexplored. This motivates the development of the synthesis method I will describe. This method uh, it's in two parts. The first part is the fabrication of the precursor solution, and the second part is the preparation of the tin film. For the first part, we began using bismuth nitrate as the bismuth source, and it is dissolved in ethanol and a small amount of nitric acid. This is in con constant stirring and at room temperature. After that, uh, we add citric acid, polyethylene glycol, and molybdate ammonium as the source of molybdate. This is still, and after one hour, we obtain the precursor solution. This precursor is important for the fabrication of the of the I'm sorry, sorry, of the thin films. Uh, the thin films were fabricated by the deep coating technique on pre glass, the withdrawal speed uh, was two centimeters per minute. And uh, after the deposition, the films were annealed at three different temperatures, 450 degrees, 500 degrees, and 550 degrees Celsius. These processes was repeated three time, five times, sorry, uh, to achieve the desired file thickness. After that, we synthesized the material in the thin films, and continue with the characterization. The X-ray diffraction results of the thin fields annealed at different temperatures show the presence in the, in the X-ray diffraction of five diffraction planes uh, who match well with the crystallographic pattern, uh, this 220112. Additionally, two planes, the 301, who is this, and the 332, who is this? Uh, who match well with the pattern 220113. Both PDF patterns belong to the same compound, but the crystal dimensions differ. With this, the first, it's uh, larger, uh, around 5.5 times larger than the second, making the second, the second pattern a little bit denser. At the nailing temperature increase, uh, we can see the diffraction planes improves, and additionally, peaks were observed, possibly related to bismuth oxides. Using the Williamson Hall method, we estimate the crystallite size, and we can see at 450 degrees Celsius, we have a crystallite size around 24.8, and on 550, we have 34.1 nanometers. Uh, but in the micro strain, we cannot see a trend like the crystal size. Only we can see at uh, 550 and 550, more or less the same, the same value. On the other hand, the Raman spectra are shows in the figure number four, uh, show the characteristic modes of the bismuth molybdate, who is the new one to new five. All of these modes are described in this table. And it's important uh, note that the main mode of every 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 spectra is the nu six, who, uh, according to the literature, is the link to the other phase of bismuth molybdate with this stoichiometry. But this phase is reduced in intensity as the heat trimming temperature increase. Continue with the optical properties of the thin films. The absorbance spectra of the synthetic thin films was compared with the same compound, but in powders. We can see in powder, 
this edge uh, extends around 450 nanometers. In this uh, spectra, we have a slightly uh, a small step. This step we can see here. And this is only do a lamp change in the equipment. The bank up of the bismuth molybdate based systems was estimated using tau plots for both thin films and powders, and it's shown in figure six. In both cases, an increase in the band gap value is observed at sintering temperature increase. In the thin films, the estimated band gap values are here, 3.78, 3.82, and 3.86 electron volts. It can be known that there is an increase in the, in the band gap around 0 0.04 electron volts every 50 degrees Celsius increasing the temperature. And for the powders, the, the band gap was 2.84, 2.86, at 2.91. And these values align well with those reported in the literature and indicates activity under visible light. The band gap values for the thin films are approximately one unit higher compared to the powders. And this effect can be attribute for a diversity of factors, such as crystal size, surface strain, morphology effects, or uh, curvature in the conduction band. After the characterization, uh, we, we continue with the photocatalytic performance, and we can see how uh, degrade or material in this, in this case, it's a degradation of methylene blue under sunlight, and the test took uh, five hours. And by the end of the experiment, the degradation rates for the three thin film samples were quite similar, with removal percentage around in the three samples, around the 80%. And this suggests that the photocatalytic active phase of the bismuth molybdate uh, was successfully obtained. During the first half of the experiment, uh, we can see a faster degradation in two samples. The samples sintered at 450 degrees and the sample sintered at 550 degrees. Both these samples are received a higher standard deviations, uh, which in this case could be attributed to impurities and lower crystallinity. But in photocatalytic processes, uh, such properties are beneficial and they can increase the number of active surfaces, facilitating several oxidation reduction uh, reactions. Furthermore, in in the in the right in the right, we have the reaction kinetics for all samples, and all the reactions follow a first order reaction model, and the rate constants is very quite similar in the three cases. The final was the conclusion. So the bismuth molybdate based systems in the form of thin films were obtained through sol health synthesis and using the deep coating technique as a deposition method. Different synthetic heat treatment temperatures were evaluated for the effects on the structural, optical, and photocatalytic properties for the thin films. The X-ray diffraction and Raman spectroscopy analysis confirmed the presence of bismuth molybdate as the main compound with two thorombi polymorphs, as well the presence of bismuth oxides as additional compounds formed during the synthesis. The UV beam absorption and reflection spectroscopy demonstrate that the red band gap of the system range was from 3.78 to 3.86 electron volts, varying directly with the sintering heat treatment temperature. And the photocatalytic activity of the thin film systems was evaluate through degradation of methylene blue in the presence of sunlight. And in these experiments, high bleaching rates for the solution were achieved, exceeding 80% within five hours of interaction. From these results, it concludes that the film sintered at 500 and, sorry, 450 degrees Celsius show a higher degradation during the first hour of the experiment. And after saying that, I conclude my presentation. On this slide, I have provided a list of reference that are key of the development of, of this project. I hope the findings I share with you contribute 
to a different of the potential of bismuth molybdate. And if you have any questions or any additional information, feel free to reach me out. My contact is leads here, and I would be happy to continue the conversation. Thank you for your attention. Thanks very much for your presentation. We Thank ask you. anyone around the questions or comments. Seems to me there are no many. I have a question for you. How uh, how is the stability of this material? I mean, it lasts after you uh, experiment, or or there yeah. is no any. Hmm? Yeah, of course. In this case, I don't mention any of of that, but. This material uh, it has a high, stomach, high chemical stability and high corrosion resistance. A part of this, uh, we have um, an experiments that prove the material in, in various cycles. Uh, we prove around 10 cycles, and in all the 10 cycles, the material demonstrate uh, uh, the, the same the same corpontan of in this case. So the material is very robust for for photocatalytic, photocatalytic applications. OK, thanks very much. So thank you for your presentation. OK, thank you so much for the opportunity. Have a good day. Bye -bye. So we close uh, this session and we say thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.